Okay, I just wanna pop in right now at the beginning of this video and let you know later, we are gonna cover some basic electric installation tips for any kind of van that you have if it has no power system. And then also cover how to charge things like portable power systems and accessories and things you wanna use when you're actually parked, camping, or whatever it is you wanna do. Maybe you wanna run a fridge, that'd be cool. It is so good to be in Hamilton. It's great to have you. Thanks for coming out. We just went on this epic camping trip. One night, it was massive. Just two dads with their families yeah. in the vans. That's a monopod. What did you say, sleeps eight? No, no, right, seats eight. <laughs> it seats eight, sleeps four. Kind of perfect. Jesse, your van is super cute. Thank you. Thank in you. the most endearing kind of way. Yep, I agree. I am just a little bit sad for you that you can't power things on the go. Yeah, me too. Like I can. That's one of the first things that I've known I've wanted to fix on this vehicle is make it more like a practical production right. tool slash camp out vehicle. As luck would have it, <laughs> a company named Jackery reached out and they wanted to do a sponsored video. Sick. They make all-in-one power systems. Okay. Trying to accomplish a similar goal to the custom system I have in my van. Yeah. In this video, we're gonna cover some of the pros and cons of a unit like this. Okay, cool. Because clearly, because it's an all-in-one package, it can't do all of the things my van can do. Right. But it is actually very functional and practical for everyday charging of various accessories and being able to use the sun to power the things that we have yeah. in this content creator life. Oh, oh, interesting. This looks, I don't know why I expected this to be kind of like janky. I just, I didn't expect it to be like a, a nice, oh, so there's two of these? Quick note, magnets. How do they work? I, I had looked into a bunch of units on Kickstarter and I never pulled the trigger because two fears. One is like, never heard of the company. Are they gonna be around in right. five years if I have an issue with it? Yeah. And then two, are they even gonna ship the thing? Because I have been bit in the behind before on products that never came in. For full transparency, there is other options on the market. I'm not gonna be able to compare and contrast all the features of all of them in a video like this. We're just gonna be generally talking about are power units like this actually worth investing your time in? Mm. I will say last year we got to test one of the units a full year on our sailboat. It held up great. The build quality is awesome. And so that kind of gave me the confidence now when they reached out to do the sponsor video, I now, I've actually used one of their units and the one they sent out uh, to put in your van, I think is gonna be pretty awesome. Oops. That works so well. Oh, this was the Red Dot Award for 2016. Images for reference only. You cannot power your things off of this picture. Okay, that's not as heavy as I expected actually, because batteries get heavy. It's only 22 pounds. So Jesse, this box right here is basically trying to accomplish everything that a custom power system, a van can do all just in one yeah. box. So when you're using a solar panel, it's bright sunlight during the day, yeah. but you wanna use that power at nighttime. Well, you store that power inside this unit. Yeah. And this unit gives you a lot of different ways to use that power. Hmm. Also measure it as you're using it. And it's basically an all-in-one power system. Sweet. So a couple things that you're gonna to wanna to note about this is just how much power can it store that you can use to charge your things. Yeah, yeah. And we can do some math on that in a bit of just how many one wheels could you charge? How long could you run a light? Yeah. What's the brightest thing you could run off this? The, there's basic numbers that we can run to figure that out. Okay. But as a whole here, you can be charging this off the DC outlet of your vehicle. Yeah. So you can be giving it DC power to charge it. You can give it power through a wall outlet where it'll turn AC power from a house into DC, straight into the DC port. Yeah. That's one way you can charge it. And then when you want to use the power, it's got all these AC ports on the front. So it's got an inverter built into this unit right, switch it back. that can take the DC power of the battery and turn it into a current that most household accessories like a one wheel charger would run off. Right. So kind of a basic power principle is if you're using power stored in a battery, yeah. the most effective way to get it out is in DC form. So any kind of camera chargers or things like that, you want to use the DC adapters if you have them. Right. Because that will get you the most use out of this Yeah, unit. I've got like USB power chargers. Right. Because every time you're going through AC, yeah. you're going to be losing some efficiency. Mm -hmm. So if you like plug the household fridge into this, 
that's going to draw way more power than something that's actually meant to run off DC current. Right. Oftentimes, something that's built to run off DC would be more expensive. Yeah. Like a camping cooler is going to be more expensive than a mini, mini fridge for a dorm room. Right. But it's going to be way more efficient power. Right. That's what I was just thinking. Most of the like, you know, electric coolers I've seen yeah. do run off of like a DC. Yeah. And usually those coolers can be up to like a thousand bucks for a cooler, yeah. which is sometimes surprising when, you know, one for a dorm room could be 200 bucks. Right. So if you wanted to put this guy in the back of your van and a cooler next to it, you could run a cooler off this for probably two or three days, depending on the size of the cooler. Oh, that's perfect. So, so thinking about how much power is in this, this is the numbers that confused you before. Yes. Uh, a thousand and two watt hours is how many watts are available in this unit. Yeah. And then the thousand watt number over here, you were wondering like, what are so yeah. similar about this? This number is the load that you can continuously run off this system. So if we just plugged in a light to one of these AC ports and turned it on. Hit the AC button. Hit the AC button. So that's turning the inverter on. Yeah, Matt. 81, 94. 94 watts. 97 watts, yeah. 97 watts? Is 90, it holding there? 94, it's holding it. Okay, so this light, we could run at 80% brightness for 10 hours off this unit. Oh. On their website, they have this fun little graphic to help break this all down for our simple brains. And it just gives examples of generic items that you'd want oh, to be using. I could use a blender for how long is that? 13 hours? You could use 13 hours with the blender. Imagine how smooth your smoothie would be. More applicably, you could charge your camera roughly 50 times. Yeah. So that's guessing that it's a 10 watt hour draw. Right. An iPhone, you could charge 100 charges. You could run a TV for 14 hours. That's a 60 watt draw. You could charge your laptop eight full charges. I mean, learning all this and seeing this is super helpful because sometimes I have ideas like, oh, what if we brought like a projector out into the forest right. for some sort of idea that yeah. we're having, right? It's like, oh, okay, I could run that projector for, and then I would check the thing and, yeah. okay, so this could power the projector and a light and maybe a speaker, add all the math. Okay, cool, it'll do it for two hours. That will be my forest projector experience. Right. That's super helpful. I want to give one of these units away to someone in the comments because they're honestly just really helpful. Yep. Drop a comment down below what you would charge, what you would power with the Jackery unit, and uh, I will randomly select a comment at the end of the month and uh, make sure you get one of these units because, I nice. don't know, it'd be fun to give one away. I'm going to leave a comment. You're already getting one, Jesse. <laughs> I want you, to. I'm going to ban you from commenting on my channel so that way... Yeah, hi, user from channel. <laughs> yes. Is this area good? Yeah, like sometimes this bench will come back a little bit. Sometimes it'll move forward a bit. I'm gonna do some some fun things and then you go do some fun things. Fun things. <laughs> Dude, this is my favorite part about any van modifications is the wiring. I love this part. And my favorite part about you is that you like doing it. I'm gonna cover some of the tools that I think are necessary to actually diagnose, audit, see what's going on inside your current van. These are just my go-to things to make electrical stuff work. And then hopefully once we audit Jesse's van, we can easily add some really helpful accessories. And then after that, look at what the implications are for using things like an all-in-one power system alongside additional modifications to your van, all while making sure you don't kill your starter battery. These three tools right here are my absolute basic go-to for any electrical project. And then these are just individual parts and connectors we'll cover in a sec. These are my favorite wire strippers because they automatically adjust to any wire size and D, take off the insulation right away. So these wire strippers give me so much joy while using. I use it to also cut wires right there. So if we wanted to cut a section of wire off, we could just go in, cut wire. This is a vice crimp. So when we wanna use connectors to attach wires together, we want a crimping tool to actually create a good connection. That's the biggest mistake people who are getting into DIY electrical do, is they try to use the crimpers built into small wrenches like this and that is increasing your likelihood that you have bad connections and bad connections cause fires, cause melting, cause just, you don't want bad connections, just do good connections. And then this right here is a multimeter. Honestly, I don't know what 90% of a multimeter can do, but you can switch it into a mode that can tell you what the current voltage is of the wire that you are testing or the battery. And then you can also put it into another mode where it'll make a beeping sound if a wire is actually connected all the way through. So this is very helpful. I like ones that have alligator clip connect-ons, so that way you can attach it to one side, run over to the other side and, you know, connect wires. Let's do a basics of basics crash course on connectors. Uh, 
These are the things that you want to use to connect your wires together when you've spliced them. There are different types. Oftentimes you can get a box set that has all the different types in one go. I like getting different box sets that are the different types and the different color of connectors are for the different sizing of wire thickness. So these blue guys are the ones I end up using most often and it's 14 to 16 gauge wire. And then the yellow ones are for heavier duty wire and that is 12 to 10 AWG wire. The main ones I use are butt splice connectors. That's how you can connect two different wires together, crimp them and seal them. Over here, these are called spade connectors. So it's a male end, a female end, and they can go together so you can create a quick detach connection. And then the third type that I use are ring terminals. These are the ones where if you want to terminate an end and be able to attach it to like a bolt or any kind of lug attachment area, that's what these connectors are for. I like getting specific kits of each type because when you get the massive 250 piece box sets, it often comes with lots of connectors that I never end up using. So doing it this way, make sure I'm actually getting the connectors I like using. One thing to note about connectors is you definitely do not want to cheap out on this area of your purchasing because connectors are going to be the main fail point if you do these incorrectly. And on Amazon, there is so many different options at so many different price points. And often a lot of them are not very good. So what I'd look for is ones that are heat shrink compatible and also marine grade, which often means that they have adhesive. So that way when you heat shrink, it actually glues to the wire and make sure that it's a more solid connection. So for instance, if we crimp with our crimper tool to make sure that this is a good, strong fit and we put in the other side, see we splice some of this wire. Let's say we're connecting two wires. We would normally never connect a red to a black like this. So I've just crimped both sides of this butt splice connector use a heat source to actually heat shrink the connections. And what you'll see here as it heats up, so that adhesive you can see around the heat shrink there is what we're looking for, for a good seal. That way no water is gonna get in. It holds onto the cable really well. This is the kind of connection you're gonna to wanna to be going for. Okay, before we get any further, I wanna show you really practically and visually how to attach accessories properly to the batteries of your vehicle without draining them dead. So let's say this is our starter battery. So I'm gonna put a positive and a negative here. Okay, here are our two wires, the positive and negative attached to our fake battery at the terminals. So there'd be other wires going to different areas of the van if this was a starter battery. But hypothetically, we could just attach these two cables to an accessory on the positive and negative terminals and we would get power to this and we could use it immediately. But if we did that and we kept using power from here, this would drain the starter battery down and it could hypothetically not have enough power to start the van again. So that's something we're trying to prevent, but we also have to consider what type of wire we are using to connect which type of accessories. So something you definitely need to consider is the thickness of your wire for the accessory you are trying to run. It's very common for people to use wire that is not thick enough to carry as much power as you're trying to pull through this wire. And what will happen there is the wire might get way too hot. It might melt at the connections. I highly recommend just doing some basic math before you start cutting and running cables for your van because you really wanna make sure your wires are sized correctly. The second really important part about wiring is making sure that each cable run you do has a fuse. I'm a simple guy. I think of wiring like water through pipes. So if you're trying to move a lot of water through a pipe, you need a thick enough pipe, a big enough pipe to get that water through at the pressure you're trying to move it. And if you try to put too much pressure through a pipe that's too small, you're gonna burst it. And what a fuse does is it's designed to break early so that way you don't break anything else or start a fire. So every single wiring circuit that you add to the starter battery of your van you really need to do some math on which size fuses for your size cable should you be running in your van. So again, let's pretend we've got our accessory connected with wires to our starter battery with the correct size fuse. If this starts pulling too much power, this fuse would pop and you wouldn't break or melt anything. In a van, when you don't want the accessory to be running when the van is off, you can add a solenoid or a switch. So a switch, on the positive lead to your accessory. If you just killed that switch, it would disconnect the wire. This would no longer get power. I assure you it's a lot easier when you have the parts in your hand and you're understanding the principles at play. The basics of it is we attach fuses in the positive leads of our accessories. We also attach 
switches in the positive leads, you want your fuses attached as close to the source of the power as possible. I cannot stress how important it is to make sure that your connections are crimped correctly and you're using the right wiring size for the distance you are running it with the correct fuse. That is so important. Please do not do wiring on your van without running the math, checking your accessory, how many amps does it pull at 12 volts, what size wiring do I need, and just, just don't mess this part up because this could burn your van down and that would not be great. Okay, this is under the hood. This is Jesse's starter battery. Uh, the main leads here are going to the engine because that's the heaviest power load to actually start the van. And then the alternator would charge back through these big heavy leads. Uh, you can see over here, he's got some fuses that are directly attached. And then right over in this area, he's got another main fuse block area. This battery in most vehicles is the one that you really wanna make sure you don't use up too much power from when you're off. So that way there's still enough juice there to start the van when you charge. Over here, we have an auxiliary battery installed by the previous owner that had some funky things going on that we got to discover. And we've got to figure out when are these attached? When are they not connected? How much power can you use from that one? So coming into Jesse's van here, this is where things get very interesting. He's got AC outlets here with a switch to turn it on and off. Those work. And then there's this inverter here, which we don't know where this guy is getting power from. That's what we got to figure out. Our first goal before we begin attaching wires and changing things is actually getting a clear picture of what's going on here. So that way we don't mess anything up, but then also informs us of how we can use power from this van in the future. So this is just a male 12 volt cigarette. And what it tells us is when it's plugged in, the LED light has not turned on. So this most likely does not have power when the ignition is off. We're gonna double check that by checking a reading off this. So putting our meter into DC mode, we are getting zero power at this outlet currently. Okay, we now have a red light, so we are getting power here. Attach the lead. Okay, we are getting 13.6 volts, that's good. Okay, I wanna now learn what's going on with this additionally added battery, what it's all connected to. Uh, before we move on here because this is going to tell us a lot. So I've got my voltmeter and what I'm going to do right now is check voltage at each different battery while cycling the van on and off because that will be able to tell me when nothing's connected and the van is off. Let's read voltage from both of these real quick. So this battery is sitting at 12.82 volts and this one is sitting at 13.2. So this battery currently has more charge in it and they are not connected together currently, but at some point they are connecting together because this one is getting charged from somewhere and we wanna figure out what is running off this extra battery. Oh wow, okay. And now it's getting nothing. Okay, so what I've learned is that all of the main fuse blocks of the van for the accessories, so the outlets, the stereo, basically anything inside the van all comes back to and is attached to the starter battery. But then there's a charging lead coming off the starter battery through a voltage sensing relay over to the battery, that's the auxiliary one. Another way to think of a voltage sensing relay is basically just a switch that will turn on and off when it senses that the source it's taking power from has reached adequate voltage which in this case is adequate charging. The only thing that is attached to that auxiliary battery currently is this inverter right here. Okay, now I know that's a lot and I blitzed through that pretty quick, but I've now learned what is necessary to actually start attaching things to the van and how to do that in a way where we aren't gonna mess things up for Jesse in the future. Um, Jesse's setup is actually pretty great because he's got this auxiliary battery that's disconnecting from the starter when he has the van off. That is awesome because that is power we can use when parked. That is great. I brought this accessory right here without knowing what Jesse's setup was. And this is a solenoid. So basically this just acts as an automatic switch when your van is turned off and on and you give it signal power from one of the fuses in your van that only turns on when the ignition key is turned. There's some great explanations and wiring diagrams on how to wire one of these up. So if you're gonna start attaching accessories like we're showing here to your starter battery, you want a way to disconnect them when you turn it off. Now that I'm confident, I actually know what's going on 
with the starter battery and auxiliary battery, we can start to inspect how to improve this outlet. This outlet is attached only to the starter battery and it only works when the van is on. So there's no way to get power to this source when the van is parked while camping. This wiring is tiny. It looks like it's maybe 16 gauge at most. I would not feel comfortable running any sort of heavier load off this like a cooler or charging the Jackery. So my goal now is to run a heavier gauge wire to this location so we can put better accessories in this spot, run it forward through the van. We're gonna come down through the wall here, underneath the footstep, up that way, through the carpet, forward in the van. So that way we can come down through this area, up there, through the firewall, and attach it to the auxiliary battery. What? So when Emma and I went camping by ourselves, yes. we didn't sleep in the pop top most recently. We you know, laid out all the benches as a, as a bed. What's cool is like we can plug our phones in here at night. That is the goal. That's sick. doing right now is using this old wiring to pull through the new wiring that there through the wall goes into the main cab area of the van we're about to have our new better wire fed through with a proper area for a fuse we now have the better quality wire ran in from the starter battery and we're going to start to fuse and hook things up to the circuits we're running inside the van there used to be a cigarette outlet in there and we are going to put a voltage sensing USB up. Oh, that is sick. You think it's stressful drilling holes in your own van? Try to do it in somebody else's van. Voltage reading from auxiliary battery, off, on. All right, so I get in, let me just do some, ooh. So I got this little neon light here. Oh, there's a switch here. When I need to light my cigarettes, <laughs> how <laughs> you, do I do it now? You use one of your four oh. right down there. Yeah, why are those there? Okay, so this number right here, yep. turn that switch off. Boop. Turn it back on. That is your voltage of the auxiliary battery. If that gets to 11, you turn it off. Oh, okay. The idea, right, is I pack up for a camping trip or whatever, and I would plop this down here. Yep. And I would just plug it in here. Yep. Power it up. Let's wait for some input. In there we go. And you're charging. So this is charging off of my auxiliary battery. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's amazing. So Dude. wait, would I see a drop in the voltage up front then? You would. <laughs> Yeah, so I've gone from 12.9 to 12.3. So if I turn this off, that's not charging anymore. Let's find out. Nope. Turn it off. It's not charging anymore. That's amazing. What was that? A ghost. That's fantastic. That's fantastic. I'm gonna use the bejesus out of this. What's bejesus? I don't know. <laughs> because we wired you a physical switch, right? you could accidentally leave that switch on when you don't mean to, and drain your auxiliary battery down dead. 
which would not be ideal. That would ruin the, that would make the life of the auxiliary battery be less. Gotcha. So okay. it would not, it would not last as long. Right. We finished the install last night and by the time my tools were all cleaned up, it was very dark. So I wanted to show you a quick walkthrough of what we did here in the daylight and talk through some final pros and cons about all-in-one electrical systems and uh, maybe what you should consider for your van camper project. Okay, so this is what the back of the van could look like on a typical given day. What we did was add this 12 volt outlet here with a higher capacity and two USB outlets that are powered from the auxiliary battery of the van that can be turned off with a switch so that way you don't accidentally use more than the auxiliary battery can take. So the Jackery is currently charging off that 12 volt plug down to here. Jesse could take this outside, run whatever production lights or anything that he wanted, grab it, take it back inside the van, and just a pretty simple process of making sure that you plug it in so it is getting charged. So then what things look like in the front here is we added a USB outlet here with a voltmeter of the auxiliary battery. I added a little label that said 11 volt minimum, just to remind Jesse not to drain this past 11 volts. There's a switch to turn the auxiliary battery power on and off. And then we also tidied up the installation of this inverter here and added a proper fuse in the engine bay area for the wire coming back to this whole auxiliary electrical setup. I'm really pleased with how this whole quick modification came together and I think the added functionality of Jesse being able to use better what's already equipped inside the van. And let's close off with some final considerations on if an all-in-one power system is right for you. Uh, I think it comes down to what you want out of your van and how much how much customizing you're actually willing to do. Because the beauty of a system like this is that it's practical even outside of the van use case where you could take this out on barbecues, on film shoots in the forest. So it does have value without needing to be specifically applied only to van stuff. And it is kind of nice that all of the components are built right into the unit. And you can, you can just take this into the back of your van, use a 12 volt charger like this. If you have outlets that are actually rated to run this, you could just plug it in and you're off to the races and you don't have to do all that custom outlet work that we did to Jesse's van just to try to give him a better van experience. None of that is actually necessary. You could just grab one of these and get going. I think one of the limitations you're gonna run into is just, it's don't think of a unit like this as endless power to use to as if you're at your house. It does take some adjustment to just be aware of how much power you are using from it because if you are charging all these things off at all the time and using these high power items, you are gonna be able to move through this battery size decently quickly and if you're planning to use it across multiple days of camping you might find you will run out faster than you would expect if you're not paying attention but it is certainly very very helpful to have some form of additional power when you're out there just exploring you want to run a fridge or something like that so those are some of my thoughts. If you have additional questions about a unit like this, I'm happy to try and answer them. But uh, that's gonna be it for this video. Thank you so much for watching and remember, life's better when you make stuff. Peace.